Second time now, Joe Erickson sings our current song of the month, Amazed. For your free printed copy, write to Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California. In Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. <laughs> Not 
about heaven, and we are so grateful to World Missions here in Pasadena for making available Moody's 50-page book on My Heavenly Home, wherein he elaborates on its inhabitants, its happiness, its certainty, and its riches. Doesn't that sound good? Yes, indeed. And you may have a copy if you just ask for it when you send in your contribution to help keep the Lutheran Gospel Hour on the air just now when... So many things make listeners forget to write. Ask for My Heavenly Home, or if the title slips from your memory, merely ask for Moody's Book Offered This Month. The address you remember is Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California, and the zip code is 91102. In Canada, you write to the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7K3K4. That is Lutheran Gospel Hour, Box 12, Pasadena, California, 91102. And in Canada, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7K3K4. <laughs> We 
turn today to the prophet Isaiah chapter 59. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. It has often been said that conditions have never been as terrible as they are now. That young people have never had so many temptations as they meet today. That ungodliness, atheism, irreverence, and blasphemy against holy things have never compared with that of this age. Now you may question this, but Scripture tells us that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. And so in 2 Timothy 3.13 you have that word that certainly explains the age that we live in. It is also in accordance with Scripture that as God gives the greater light, as people refuse it, they harden themselves and become worse. We surely cannot deny that we are an enlightened age. We are the space age, an age far above that of other ages as far as enlightenment, improvement, and uh, those things that would tend to make life certainly outstanding. But together with all the advantages have come the disadvantages, the hardening of hearts. Why are there so few who really earnestly seek God today? Is the gospel too old-fashioned? Has it lost its power? Has God failed? Oh no, you say, and I agree with you. No, no, a thousand times no. God's holy word declares, The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy. His hand has reached sinners deep in the mire of sin today as of days of yore. I have preached in slum meetings in the skid row sections, and I have preached in some of the more elite churches of our days. And yet I find that man everywhere needs that hand of God that can reach them where they are, because man by nature is inclined to put distance between himself and God. But God's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy. His hand has reached out and is reaching out today, and we thank God for all the noble cases of those that come out of darkness into God's wonderful light. Notice, see, that the prophet Isaiah says that his hand certainly is not shortened, nor is his ear heavy. Elderly people begin to lose their hearing, and it's very difficult. You must shout at them. But God, who is eternal, never lacks. He hears the faintest cry of the weakest sinner, and he has heard the cry of distress again and again. Prayer has been answered. It has been my joy in evangelistic meetings to note again and again that God is still on the throne and hears those that cry to him. Children have cried, teenagers, and young people, young married people, elderly people. What a joy to see the hand of God reaching out to them. So certainly we cannot blame God because that the, the scriptures have been ignored. No, it is man's sin that has separated between man and God. And therefore you will note in our text that in your iniquity, says the, song, or says the writer of prophet Isaiah, that has separated between you and God, hiding God's face so that he will not and he cannot hear. Because your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you that he will not hear you. Iniquities indicate the crookedness, the perverseness of man's nature. We have one word, sin, which means missing the mark. We have another word, transgression, which means willful disobedience and trespassing. And then you have the word iniquity, which denotes the crookedness of man's nature. He is inclined away from God. It is the crookedness and perverseness of man's original nature that causes transgression and missing the mark. So the Lord says, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. He goes on to say, your hands are defiled with blood. This was acknowledged by the Jews when they said, his blood be upon us and our children. When Christ was accused and was to be nailed to the cross, then it was that the Jewish people as a race said, his blood be upon us. 
and they have tasted the result of that curse that followed the Jews to this very day, hide in God's face. But many have seen their folly and have turned back to God. And even today, God is preparing their own country for them, though there are many returning in unbelief. Yet the day is going to come when they're going to see him whom they crucify and shall acknowledge him. Yes, hands are defiled with blood. Now this should be acknowledged by the Gentiles as well. We are also guilty of the death of Christ. It was our sins that brought him there. And if you haven't seen that, you haven't seen the meaning of redemption. Christ died for the ungodly. And the ungodly were not only the Roman soldiers, the Jewish leaders, that caused Christ to be crucified. Gentiles are included. The same ungodliness that caused Christ to build the cross, the same ungodliness of the Jews is of the Gentiles, so that all men must acknowledge it is our sins that nailed him to the tree. On judgment day your hands will be filled with innocent blood if you in life haven't confessed your sins and your sinfulness. Now that one sin of rejecting Jesus is enough to condemn, but sin never goes unaccompanied. It multiplies, it grows so fast. And therefore notice from the hands the prophet goes on to the fingers. Your fingers are defiled with iniquity. In other words, who can count them? You count them by our, by our fingers. Well, I tell you, this is beyond the counting, not merely ten in number. There were ten commandments. A man becomes guilty on every count, on every finger. You are a transgressor that be way beyond that. Iniquities are more than one on each finger. They are multiplied. And therefore, the multiplicity of sins stand before the sinner. And the question comes, can God forgive me the works of my hands of sin? But not only the evil of the hands and of the fingers, but your lips have spoken lies says the prophet. And the Lord said, No liar shall inherit the kingdom of God. What are some of these lies? Well, first of all, broken promises. The young who say, When I get older, I'll accept Christ. And then the years of youth come and go, and man is yet not yet accepted Christ. Those broken promises are lies. Are you there, my friend, today, who have made promises, but you've broken them? Are you amongst those that are sick who say, if God makes me well, I'll give him my heart? Many people have promised God on a sick bed, but when they became well, they've forgotten their promises. God, if you let me live now, I'll be a Christian, so many have said. But when the cause has been removed, then sin takes a hold again. It's meaningless confession if you say, I'm a sinner. Now that's true. But if you're unsaved, you make it a lie by not accepting Jesus as Savior of sinners. Because it is truly meaningless to be reciting a creed that we are all poor, lost, condemned sinners if you haven't come to Christ and claimed him as your Savior. And so you have your fingers. Your lips have spoken lies. Your fingers have, are defiled with iniquity. And finally, your tongue has muttered perverseness. This means willfully blaming God, and that's the one reasonable. Your sins are the cause of all evil, and therefore God, again, would have you reckon with the words of Ezekiel 18, 30, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Notice the two things that God calls for, repent and turn. Both of these call for a decision. I will acknowledge my sin. I'm willing to turn away from it. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin, said the Lord. On a $5 bill received in a saloon before prohibition days, this was found written. This is the last of a large fortune run to do it. Oh, how sad to see a man's resources dwindle. How sad to see the years fly by and... Sinners wearing themselves out in the service of sin, Satan, and the devil. In hell the damned shall cry, I am the sinner that Christ died for, but I despise him, and iniquity has become my ruin. Either you can know the meaning of true revival, this is the day that the Lord calls. 
You can sense, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. He's reaching out today in so many ways that he couldn't use before. Today we have the gospel in song and spoken word on the radio, the literature campaigns, the literacy campaigns likewise, the spread of the word, the learning of the word in many heathen lands. And here at home, multiplied ways whereby you may hear and perceive that God is love, and he doesn't want the sinner's death, but he wants us to come to him and know salvation and life in his name. And so in the closing moments of this broadcast, my friend, I would plead with you, as one who has known the way of the gospel for many years now, as a young lad at the age of 14, I came to see more than my sins, I saw my sinfulness and the need of a Savior. And kneeling there at the foot of the cross of Calvary, I found one who saved me from my iniquity, who blotted out my transgressions, who showed me that my sins were atoned for. And these years, I have become an advisor to many young people and many old. I go to many Bible camps and conferences and evangelistic meetings besides the radio ministry. And I say, and I get to see, the Lord is able to reach souls whose hand is not shortened, his ear is not deaf. Now don't your ear become deaf to the cause of God, but God grant by his grace that you may be a, a good attentive listener, he shall say, this day and in every way I shall serve the Lord as I first give him my soul and then my life. Lord Jesus, in the closing moments of this broadcast we pray that there might be the joy of heaven come down to earth as precious souls behold thee as the one whose hand is not shortened. For we ask it in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Oh, <laughs> 